so we now know given a certain amount of donors and given a certain amount of acceptor atoms in my semiconductor i now know how to calculate the number of electrons and holes i have and we did that in one of the previous videos but one of the assumptions that we made in deriving this that was that i assumed complete ionization of these of these of these dopants that is i assume that if i add a certain number of dopants all of them ionize that is if i add certain number of donors all of them ionize and you know the number of ionized donor atoms is equal to the number of uh, donor atoms i added similarly the number of acceptor atoms that i added is equal to the number of ionized acceptor atom I'll get. So we made this assumption when we derived this formula for calculating the number of electrons and holes in the presence of dopants. So in this video, I want to give you some more details. And like you know, most assumptions, we make assumptions in life, but it's good to you know good go back and check whether they are really valid or not. So in this video, I want to take up this exercise and give you some more granularity as to what goes into this assumption and whether when it's valid and when it's not so let's let's start with uh, our semi our friend or good friend or good old friend band diagram of a semiconductor so i'll draw the conduction band and uh, valence band and uh, i'll also draw uh, using a green dotted line i'll draw this energy level which is representative of where my energy of my donor atoms are so this is where energy of my donor atom lies and then i'll also have a fermi energy and which will i'll use draw using this yellow dotted line and this is responsible for or this is used to calculate the number of electrons and holes i have and donor like you know most of other things in semiconductor they obey fermi dirac statistics as well so the number of a number of uh, donor atoms which are uh, ionized or which are not ionized will be given by a fermi dirac statistic so the number of i can expect that the number of number of donor atoms which are ionized would be given by the number of doton atoms i had multiplied by this for me direct kind of function and that is what i have uh, what i have what i have what i have uh, written over here so the number of ionized donor and acceptor atoms it's given by these formula which is they look very similar to this fermi dirac statistics and this uh, ionization depends upon depends upon how far is my fermi energy from the energy level of my donor atom so it depends upon in the case of donor atom it depends upon this difference between the fermi energy and my donor energy but this one little extra thing over here so there's this degeneracy there's this extra g term over here and this g stands for degeneracy factor so this d stands for degeneracy factor and this is something i'll talk about i'll make a separate video upon but just to give a 10 second explanation it comes from the fact that these donor or these dopant atoms they are localized atoms also each of these states there could be two electrons one could be spin up and spin down so there's a degeneracy factor which uh, is associated associated with the statistics of dopant atoms and this degeneracy factor is two for the case of two for the case of donors and it's equal to four for the case of acceptors so now what i want to do is to calculate or you know calculate the actual amount of uh, uh, atoms ionized using this uh, statistics and whether and check back on this assumption that we made earlier so the first thing we need to know to to go ahead and uh, in our pursuit of uh, of uh, verifying this assumption of uh, complete or incomplete ionization is to find out where is my dopant energy or you know where is the energy of this donor atom with respect to the conduction band so the first thing i need to know is this difference between the conduction band and the energy level of donor and this is what is called as binding energy so this 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 energy difference is called as the binding energy so the first thing I look up is the binding energy for the for the donor that I'm using. So let me scroll down over here. 
and uh, fortuitously i've uh, i've given over here the binding energy of uh, different uh, of different dopant atoms and i'll restrict myself or i'll take the case of phosphorus which has a binding energy of approximately 45 milli electron volt so what this means is that in terms of my bind diagram so if i draw my bind diagram of my silicon again so this is my conduction band and my valence band and what it says is that this dopant atoms they are located at this this position which is 45 milli electron volt or this separation uh, let me use the same color so this separation is 45 milli electron volt So now I've been asked to verify this uh, this uh, complete ionization for two cases. So I've been asked for a dopant density of 1e17 and then the other case is for a dopant density of 3.2e19. So how do I go about uh, verifying this, uh, you know, verifying whether I have complete ionization or not? So one way I can do that is to first assume that I have complete ionization then calculate the position of my Fermi level and then go back to the statistics and go back to the statistics and verify that in fact did I have ND plus equal to ND or did I in fact have complete ionization or not. So let me do that for uh, for the case first of this dopant density of 1E17. So given that I have a dopant density of uh, 1E17, if I assume complete ionization, then I can simply use this formula that my number of number of electrons is equal to nd minus na this is assuming complete ionization and na in this case is zero i just have added i just assume it's zero because i have not been given any information so i'll assume that nd is equal to 1e17 and na is equal to zero so the number of uh, number of uh, electrons i have is equal to 1e17 and we also know that this should be equal to, so this N, which is 1E17, should be equal to, or should be given by this formula, where it's related to the effective density of states in my conduction band, and it's exponentially depends upon how far in conduction band from my Fermi energy, or it depends, it's given by this formula, which we know by now. So if I have a Fermi energy over here, or actually if I have a given concentration of uh, electrons, the location of my Fermi energy is given by this formula. So the first thing I need to calculate this is uh, to know the effective density of states uh, in the case of silicon in the conduction band. So I'll, I can quickly look it up and I usually prefer this uh, Russian website which is for a Russian uh, institute uh, for, uh, for you know, electronic research and it says that the effective, effective conduction band density of states is equal to 3.2 E19 per centimeter cube. So I have over here, I have 10 to the power 17 is equal to 3.2 E19 times this exponential function, times this exponential function. So I can take further uh, natural log on both sides and that will give me that will give me EC minus EF by KT is equal to the log of so I'll uh, I'll take this on the other side so I'll divide this by 1E17 so I'll be left with 3.2 E2 or I'll be essentially taking a log of natural log of 320. And further, I know that this KT is equal to at, let's say I'm at room temperature, I'm at room temperature. So at room temperature, KT is approximately equal to 25 milli electron volt. So I'll get EC minus EF is equal to 25 into LN of 320. So I'll take, I'll take natural log of 320. So I'll take 320 and I'll take natural log of that and multiply it with 25. So I'll get the position or the difference between my conduction band and my Fermi energy level to be approximately 144 milli electron volt. So what I get over here is that my Fermi 
energy is located 144 milli electron volt away from my from my uh, from my conduction band so this difference now between my donor energy level and my fermi energy is now equal to 144 minus 45 which is equal to 99 milli electron volt av so now let me verify now that if i have my fermi energy separated at a located 99 milli electron volt below my donor energy level so do i have complete ionization or not so let me scroll up and i'll go back to this this formula and let me make a copy of it so let me control c and let me come back over here and and paste this formula again to remind us to remind us you know what we're dealing with so i'm interested in in finding out this uh, finding out this uh, amount of uh, donor atoms which are ionized and i'll be essentially using this formula and i already know all the variables that i need so i know i know that i know that my nd is equivalent to it's equivalent to 1e17 and then my degeneracy factor for the case of donors is equal to 2 and i also know that my also know that my donor energy level is is separated from my fermi energy level by this distance of 99 milli, milli electron volt so i have in this exponent uh, this is exponent as ef minus ed which is in this case minus minus 99 milli electron volt divided by kt which is 25 milli electron volt so i have this 1e17 term on the top and if i look at this exponent so this is essentially 1 plus 2 times exponent of minus 4 so exponent of you know exponential power of minus 4 is pretty small so this number is essentially in the denominator would be just equal to 1 or my assumption that my or my donor atoms are completely ionized is valid is valid in this case now let's look at what happens if i have if i have a larger number of uh, donor atoms so let me examine it for this case b where i have this 3.2 e19 number of dopants so i can as again use this uh, i can as again you know let me draw a line here so i can again use this uh, this formula where uh, my number of electrons gives me the position of my fermi level so now i have 3.2 e19 and my effective density of state is 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 the same number and i kind of see why i picked 3e 3e 3.2 e 19 uh, number of uh, number of uh, donor atoms and it's essentially given by given by this formula so i can take again a natural log and these two terms have already cancelled out and i have one over here and natural log of one is zero so what I get is my Fermi level is located at my conduction band in this case. So let me draw the band diagram for let me draw the band diagram for case B. So for case B, what I have is what I have is my this is my conduction band and this is my valence band. My my donor energy level, let me use the same color. So my donor energy level is located at 45 milli electron volt away from the conduction band and my fermi energy which i'll use by the star line is located at this exact same position as my conduction level so now how many what is the degree of ionization so i can again use this formula and my nd plus is essentially given by nd which in this case is in this case is in this case is 3.2 e19 and then it's divided by one plus this degeneracy factor two for donors and into exponential of this ef minus ed by kt so now my ef is located over here and ef minus ed is in fact 45 milli electron volt so let me use the same color let me be faithful to the colors so it's 45 divided by 25 
and now if you see this exponent in the in the denominator or this denominator this term in the denominator is actually quite large so my nd plus is is much smaller as compared to nd or my assumption of complete ionization is is invalid in fact whenever my fermi energy level it starts to approach this uh, donor energy level which is you know usually located close to the conduction mat so whenever my fermi energy level so if i look at you know what happened from a to b so in my case a when i had when i had 1e17 dopants so this was my case this was my case a which had 1e17 dopants and when i try to increase the number of dopants this fermi energy moves and this is the case where i had 3.2e19 dopant which is very very close to the conduction mat so as my as my fermi energy level comes very close to the to the to the donor energy level then this term in the denominator of this expression it starts to increase it starts to increase and in that case that is uh, when i have uh, my fermi energy level approaching my donor energy level which would happen if you have very high levels of doping then it's not then it's not fair to assume complete ionization and in fact we should we should calculate the degree of ionization using this formula in that case